my new iPhone is here, iPhone 15 Pro, 512 gigabytes. Yeah. I would say 512 gigabytes is overkill, <laughs> not to mention one terabyte. 256 gigabytes on my iPhone 10s. it was always more than enough. Five years ago I bought it with a price and today 15 Pro, not 15 simple, 15 Pro on 256 gigabytes is almost the same price as 10s was five years ago. If you want to buy 15, it's even cheaper. I know there were some speculations that they would increase the price. It looks like they didn't. I do not remember now, but you will see on the screen what are the differences between 128, 256 and 512 and one terabyte is a big difference. But this is the market. I'm pretty sure Apple is not the only one who does this. In the box you will find exactly what you did on 14. No, no, my mistake. On iPhone 14 you had lightning and here we have USB-C. USB-C. This is the first phone which comes with USB-C. With different port, of course, comes different accessories. For example, this one I was using with my 10s. I cannot use it anymore. I had to buy a different one. But you have to remember, you need TRRS. You see, it's TRRS. Unfortunately, on most of them is written USB-C to audio. On this one also the same, it was written USB-C to audio. I took a shot and uh, fortunately this one is TRRS. And this is only one thing, for example, I had to buy a different lavalier, Boya with USB-C. And if I want to connect it to my car, I need USB-A, USB-C. So while it is very nice that they switch to USB-C, I hope they will not switch to other ports because when you are going from one port to another, you have to change all your phone's accessories. It's a big move from Apple. Of course, they were forced by European Union, which is a very good thing. We do not need to have 10,000 different cables to do one thing like charging. So USB-C is very good. It comes with a lot of features and one of them is capability to record ProRes on external device. Unfortunately, it's not able to record normal videos on external. However, having the possibility to save ProRes externally is something very nice. The only thing that you have to remember is to have the right cable. This cable is not able to provide the full support. You need something which is specially designed for it. For example, those that come with NVMe enclosures like this one. This is a passive cable, but it's not too long. So data should be transferred without any problems. And of course, other type of cables like this one, this is three meters long and it has 20 gigabits per second transfer rate. Normal SSD should be able to do it. However, my recommendation is NVMe. You see here ProRes. Without external storage device, I cannot enable this. I've attached it, the light is on, this means it's connected. And if you want to be sure, you go to files and it should be here. You see locations, I have iCloud Drive on my phone and whatever, this is the disk. And now if I go to camera, videos and enable ProRes, yeah. In the upper side you see max time 28 minutes. This means my device doesn't have enough room for more than 28 minutes, small one. I just wanted to show you that it works. So now I'm recording ProRes directly to this small SSD. You see it's blinking, this means there is activity. Okay, let's take now the other one, a data, some normal SSD. This is not capable of reaching high speeds like NVMe. If I go to camera, and go to video and enable ProRes. Max time is eight minutes, this has a lower size. Let's start a video again. While recording the data LED is blinking. You see here is written USB-C, this means there is an external disk connected to it. And if you go to the videos, 
you should be able to see the other ones. I do not see any hiccups. From what I see, from what I tested so far, I didn't go too deep, but you should be able to record to a normal SSD. The recording is very good. No delays, no nothing. So this is a very cool feature. Unfortunately, this works only with ProRes. Mm. I would have preferred to have this option also for normal videos. I do not necessarily record ProRes. This is just the beginning. I hope in the future there will be an option to record normal videos and photos to external disk. Great. Okay. While on iPhone you do not have an option to eject it, you just unplug it. On a Mac you should eject it before. With this one I would stay away from it if you have any Mac device. I've seen also on the iPhone, it's not recognized all the time. Let's try again. Even if this one is on, you see it doesn't appear. So there is this chipset written here, which doesn't work with any Apple device. I do not know why. Earlier I was able to record on it, so when it wants, <laughs> um, it will be visible. Anyway, this is something which uh, you should be... Ah, wait. You see, now is connected. This is M1 Pro, that one is Intel. I have two... 2012 Mac Minis and an N1 Mac Mini and all of them have the same problem with JMS, uh, whatever it's written here. Stay away from it. One of the cool features about USB-C is you can connect this phone to external screen like this one, you see, cool. It's mirroring immediately. I've tested a lot of games with mirroring and also with this thing which I'm gonna present it later. It's okay, it has some impediments. For example, I cannot use it with mirroring in the same time, unfortunately, so I will have to use the on-screen controls. But when you are mirroring, you usually do not care if you are putting your fingers on the screen. However, physical buttons are way better. Anyway, I'm deviating. I've tested a lot of games with it and it's working very very nice gaming with mirroring i will present it in a separate video for now let's move forward this is how natural titanium looks like at the apple website it doesn't look like this at all even the edge should contain a, a bit more of um, gold, but this one doesn't. The packing is very simple, as with the other phones. You do not have charger, you have only the key to introduce the SIM useless or useful information, a sticker and a cable. It looks very nice. I hope it will last longer than the others. Okay, it's simple USB-C, USB-C cable. It's braided, some texture, one meter, I think. I will have to transfer everything from my current phone to uh, the other, to this one, sorry. However, to show you how it looks, I will first set it up as a new phone. So English appearance, it's too big. I can still see, so I will leave it like this. Continue, quick start. If you have your phone near, you will see a message on it that you can transfer the files. For now, I will just set it up as a new. Okay, and now the phone will be activated and software update. Agree. Let's see what else. Nothing. I cannot do anything for now. While this phone is updated, let me show you something which I find stupid. 
As I mentioned before, this new line of iPhones 15 are coming with USB-C instead of Lightning, which is very good. However, if we look at the specs and compare 15 with 15 Pro, if you have iPhone 15 or 15 Plus, even if you have USB-C, you will not have the speed of USB-C, you will have the speed of Lightning. Commercial compromise for us, not for them. Probably they said uh, if it's Pro, let's differentiate it a bit. However, when you switch to USB-C, you should switch to all features. When they released it and I saw the presentation, I had the impression this is a commercial BS, that 15 should be able to do this. However, it's a hardware limitation. The advanced A17 processor and integrated USB-C controller is the one that delivers, that gives you the speed. So 15 doesn't have A17 and doesn't have the USB-C controller which is needed for this speed. That's it. Okay, we have first reboot. Now the system is updated. We'll have to continue. Actually, I don't have to continue. I have to start all over. <laughs> Again, set up without another device. Continue. Set up for myself Face ID. Continue. Okay, get started. Yay! Continue. Create a passcode. I will not show you this. Like I said before, I will just use it as is. Light, dark, auto. Action button. Yeah, this is something new. This phone comes with action button. Can be used for a lot of things. Silent mode, focus, camera, torch, voice memo, magnifier, shortcut, no action, accessibility, blah, blah, blah. Welcome to iPhone. Ta-da! I'm coming from 10s and 10s has the notch. This island, how they call it, it's something which is not really wanted, but at this moment with current technology, they are unable to put the camera and all the sensors below the screen. So you are left with this. However, what Apple was able to do with Dynamic Island is amazing. Transforming an impediment into something cool. Like, you see, <laughs> it's very nice what they were able to do. There are a lot of other things that Dynamic Island brings you, like when you are listening to music or receiving some notification and so on. The list is long. There are applications which are supporting Dynamic Island. Not all applications are doing it because only 14 Pro had Dynamic Island. Now 15 and 15 Pro both have the same thing, so probably we should see more applications supporting this. With new ports like USB-C on this new phone comes new features. For example, you can charge another phone or another device with it. Let's see, we have an USB-C to lightning cable here. And if I put one here and one to this is my old 5S. This works from USB-C to Lightning. Lightning is not able to provide juice, to provide battery. So that is why Lightning will always receive, will not be able to send. USB-C is able to send and also is able to receive. However, when you have two USB-C phones, I do not have another one near me, but I must tell you, the one with lower battery will receive a charge from the other device. There is something which came in battery settings. On charging optimization, you have another option which is called 80 limit. If you select this, the charger will never go above 80%. So if you are the one who would prefer to not have the battery charge above 80%, this is the thing for you. There are other options like non and optimized battery charging. If you see your phone that it doesn't go above 80% and you are thinking maybe there is something uh, defective, just go to charging optimization and make sure you do not have this selected. All day battery. <laughs> when I presented the watch, I laughed on the same statement, all day battery. Well, this is not something to um, brag about. 
I would be more surprised to see and more amazed to see all week battery. This is something which uh, most phones do. I did nothing with the phone for 24 hours and battery was at 92%. Hmm. Interesting. This means doing nothing with the phone for a week, you will still have battery. In the past, the big hit about the battery life on the phone was how much it can stay in standby, yeah, without using it. Now the phones are not used only to call and to be called. Standby is no more relevant. If we go to about, cycle count is available here. Another interesting thing is you have manufacture date, July 2023 and first use. File transfer is cool now. Select the photo and go near the phone you want to send the picture. There is a cool animation and the bee will fly away. Now you are hearing this Boya BYM3 with light, with, sorry, huh, I have to get used to it, with USB-C. If you want a dedicated video about it, let me know. This is iPhone XS. I still love it. And one thing that I will miss about it is 3D touch. Now there is haptic touch. If you long press, some menu will appear, you see. But with 3D touch, I'm able to access this even faster. This is never possible with two layers of pressure. Unfortunately, XS is the last phone with 3D touch. You may say it's not a big deal, but if you get used to it, it is. Probably the most evolved component in a phone is the camera. While, of course, other components are evolving year by year, camera, it, at least to me, it seems evolved the most because it's one of the features very much used by everybody. Long time ago, we had mobile phones without any camera and now, not only now, also 10 years ago, we had phones capable of creating very good pictures and there was no need, unless you are professional, there was no need to have a dedicated camera. If I look back, I have very, very nice photos taken with my old phones and I'm still very impressed about them. The most noticeable difference is while filming and of course during the night. But not only that, on old phones, you had to have the perfect conditions to create a very good photo. Good light, you needed to hold the phone very well because there was either no stabilization or in very early stages and your phone was not capable of removing your movement and so on. There are many aspects of how the improvement was done over the years and uh, this can be seen in the photos that I took all this time. Enjoy these photos and videos taken with older phones and also with this 15 Pro. See for yourself what is the difference and especially how good this 15 Pro is regarding photos and videos and we'll discuss about different aspects afterwards.
tractor which is creating a lot of dust and is on focus sort of and this car you have seen this car is in focus now if you go to the settings here you can see it's following the tractor and then you see it's following the car okay let's remove this if you go yes this is very nice if you go to some object that was in the focus you can uh, remove this let's so let's say i want to remove the car and that's it now i'm saving it and if i go back to that part where the car is see the car is no more in focus this is something very cool about cinematic mode let's go back to the car for example from this point when the car is visible i want to track it you just select it and that's it now if i go back you see the car is more visible now focus is on the tractor and now we switch to the car cool very cool feature i like so far i like cinematic mode 10s is still able to create very good pictures during the day the big difference between 10s and this one is during the night so uh, for example this picture is very nice look how it is there was no light in the park my girl was spinning. <laughs> you are not able to see the girl. However, everything else in the photo is uh, very nice detailed. You see, look how amazing this photo is. You can also see the stars. And 10S is not able to take this kind of shot. There is no light on the other side. This is full dark, amazing. Even the shadows on the car, they are in a very good detail and the stars of course this is another photo in low light you see how nice the details are the part that i like very much is this one i'm focusing on the bright side and you can see how amazing is this shot with maximum zoom you are almost able to see the face of the lady and I like the difference between dark and light. You see, nothing is compromised. Look at this photo, how nice it is. Dark, light, amazing. For example, this one I can see the dust on my dashboard, but the light is great. I'm not able to take this kind of picture with 10s, not in 10 million years. This is a picture taken with Wilta wide camera. Okay, that's pretty much it. I think you've seen more than enough. I'm not gonna tell you anything about its durability. I'm waiting for a leather cover. I don't want to go with that non-leather from Apple. I'm sorry, I still prefer leather. Until then, I have to be careful not to scratch it. Well, what I did not want to happen happened. I dropped my phone. I wanted to put it in my pocket and I missed it. <laughs> so it went down straight on the concrete from almost one meter. And it fell on this side here. I can see some scratches. I hope you are able to see them too. And also on the screen. The damage was not that big, however, I'm very sorry I was not able to keep it safe. Meanwhile, the case came. It's a leather case from Germany, using it for several months already. Kind of bulky. I still enjoy the phone without it. It's very good that it's keeping also your camera safe. But, like I said, it brings you some thickness. The most important is to keep your phone safe. While on different YouTube channels you can see how this phone looks when it's intentionally dropped. From my experience, from the drop that happened to me, the damage was not that big, so this phone is quite okay. I will film a bit with this one and I will show you how 10s looks after five years, right? 
be back in a second. I've started with 15 Pro and I'm ending with 10s. I think I've covered everything that I planned to. If there will be more things about it, I will create more videos. Do not worry about that. Just make sure you subscribe to not miss any. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.